All right, it is Tech Time Tuesday with Jim. Today, we're just going to point out two little features on your motherboard that you all should know about. This is an MSI, it's inverted, X470 Gaming Plus Max motherboard. I use this for crypto mining. This is a Ryzen 9 3900X. AMD CPU with its nice little LED Kohler system right here. It's powered off right now. So let's get into it. Some of the key features on this one, the two I want to talk about are right here. Right here. This is your, I don't know if it's going to focus. It's, in, it's upside down, but clear CLR CMOS. This is your friend. Look in your manual. When you buy these boards, or if you get the board secondhand and you don't have the manual, get the manual. Go to the MSI site or whatever brand you're using. Download the uh, board schematics just so you know what all these jumper settings and all these buttons on your board mean. These are for people, even if you're newbies at this stuff, this is easy to learn, guys. It's not that difficult. You have to have the manual and you just got to play around and try stuff. So what we have here is a CMOS. Why do I care about this? This CMOS is related to this little battery. This is your bat. It says bat one. So why do I care, right? Okay, when uh, I was doing a lot of crypto mining on these boards, I would have GPUs hanging off these PCIe slots or PCIe extenders coming out of these slots. So up to maybe six GPUs hanging off these things. Sometimes they, uh, the board would get confused the BIOS, it wouldn't recognize some boards. And uh, you're going, wait a minute, I got six GPUs, but it's only recognizing two, blah, blah, blah. What is the problem? And after downloading many drivers and doing all that stuff, you realize perhaps the board is confused. So there's two ways to clear the CMOS. And that's what you want to do. You want to reset the board. And that nine times out of 10, in my experience, will then allow you the board, the board, not you, allow the board to come back up and recognize the GPUs. There's two ways I do it uh, before I found out these MSI boards have these nice little buttons. But what you can do, you can just pop the battery, power it down, pop out the battery. I don't know, just do it for a couple minutes. They say 30 seconds. I just, you know, take the battery out, go get a coffee, come back, and I also unplug the power cable from the power supply, just so there's nothing passive or anything residual going through this board. It's, it's just totally inert, right? Except for the battery. So you pop the battery out, let it sit, let the board sit for a few minutes, put the battery back in, boot up, <clears throat> you will get the setup screen and you'll be good to go with the bio set as, setup screen through your, uh, through your uh, uh, HMI cable, whatever you have plugged into this board and you can go from there. If you don't want to do the battery thing, this also works as well. You just press and hold this button, press it, boom, good to go. On the motherboards that do not have this nice button, they obviously put the button button on here because it's, it's, it's used, right? They made it simple. Otherwise, on some other boards, you might have two pins and you just got to jump them. Jumping, what does that mean? You just connect them with a wire or paper clip or even a pen works. You can just, here's a metal tip pen. You just go like right here. Not on these pins, I'm just showing you how you jump. Jumping is just taking and connecting the two pins together like that, blammo. See that? Blammo. But what this little button does here, it jumps it for you by pushing it. It's just, you know, instead of doing this, it's got a button. So you do this, why? Basically to do reset the motherboard so you can uh, go in, reconfigure it from default factory settings. And uh, hopefully then it'll recognize any new hardware you had plugged into the board through the PCIe slots or other. That's, this is the only reason I do it, is to uh, get it to recognize new hardware when it is not. And it was mainly GPU. So your mileage may vary depending on what your issue is. All right, that's your CMOS, baby. Keep your manual. That is key. Just go through it. It'll show you all this stuff. And let's see, you got all these jumper settings right here. 
see all these things it'll show you your manual is your buddy and it'll show you all this stuff look at that made in china um here's your jusb one and like uh for this prison fan let's do it i'll give you a bonus section for this prison fan prism fan this led fan like i had two cables coming out of it look right here these are for the fancy mclights the little wow ooh, discotheque lighting and how do i know where to plug them in well up here this says j u s b2 matching the pins one two three there was a five pinner here and it was a j j u s b i knew that i could plug this in here to get juice to this cable which is a, J, a usb cable which powered the lights here's another one too it has two two things same here there's another one j usb 2 plug that puppy in boom i get my lights and here's your here's where they're going into on the uh, prism cooler unit it's bells and whistles you really don't need the lights so that's your call if you want to do that some people like to see all their computer stuff light up through a clear case that's cool whatever all right now the next thing i want to point out this set of uh jumpers right here mine on this msi is jfp one and on this has everything i mean some boards break it out where you can see power reset all this stuff printed across here here's where you need your manual because you got to know which of these pins for starting up your board if you want to just jump it and get the board going or you can install a switch like i have here let me show you this uh, this just made it easier because i got sick of jumping it each time just you can buy one of these little piddly little wired switches from uh, amazon or whatever you know for pennies a couple bucks and it just plugs in to the jumpers right here it is going to be let me pull this out here you can see i'm going to pop this off just pops off boom so right here it's these two per the manual my manual it's this one and this one if i didn't have this little switch i bought i would have just taken a pen and connected those two boom and boot it up and i just lost my pen hold on here's my pen you just come in here and you touch those two pins i don't figure ah it's not easy doing this yet i need like a little vanna white model to help just go in and touch those two pins like that <laughs> and it actually jumped it actually started up see how that works and that's how you manually jump it if you don't have the little switch uh to do that so these are little good things to know and uh if you're going to do that here it's turning red now let's get this away i don't want the cable to get sucked into the fan so what i can do is uh, i can now just go put this back on the way it was and I advise you to use two hands because this is a pain in the butt right now. Hold on a sec, trying to do it one handed. It says power switch. You read that? Upside down. And all these other ones, there's a reset and all this crap. You can stick a little speaker. You just got to find your jumper for the speaker if you want to hear the bells and the whistles, beep, beep, stuff like that. And that's good for troubleshooting if your board isn't booting up correctly. You want to hear those bells and whistles and figure out what's happening. All right, I'm plugged back in. Hopefully, I'm on the right pins. Focus. Here, focus, focus. There we go. So I put the pins back on. That's how you manually jump it. If you don't want to buy these little switches, my pro tip. Oh, my Lord. All right, here we go. My pro tip is to buy. Just go buy a couple of these for many for uh, as many as you need for your rigs, just get a couple. And I have like, what, 10 CPU rigs here. So it made life so much easier to start all these things up instead of going through, you know, you get good at anything. You practice it, you practice it the correct way. You know, practice doesn't make perfect. Practicing correctly makes perfect. So I, people have to realize that you can practice the wrong way and practice thousands of hours, still suck at it. But if you practice correctly, you get good at anything. Um, this is it. I just got so good at doing it with the pen or whatever, paper clip, blammo. I got some of these switches, made it so much easier to get the board up and running. So anyway, 10 minute video. We got our CMOS for today, boys and girls right here. And we got 
the USB we pointed out. Again, all this stuff that's on your board you may want to know about, like where do I plug this cable? Well, you have two USB ports, plug them in. And your jumper switch right there. So there will be a test on this, take notes, ask questions, and uh, hope this helps somebody. Again, keep your manuals is my number one pro tip and download the manuals if you don't have the uh, hard copies and put them on your bookshelf or put them in a drawer just so you have them and i also would recommend keeping the boxes any of this crap comes in this hardware keep the original boxes put your manuals and extra parts in them that way you have them because you're going to lose them otherwise if you put them in a drawer uh loosey-goosey crap style put them in a box put the box in a closet whatever and then you'll have them to to even sell if you want to sell this board or any components like GPUs and that, you will have the board to uh, do a resale on it. Uh, on eBay, if you want to do eBay, you know, eBay takes a lot of money off the top and you deal with some consumers that try to scam you. So that's always a negative, but you can still resell. That's a side note. All right, guys, see you in the next video.